Carey and I work at the Siena Branch Library and today I'm going to show you how to make a vat of indigo and I'm going to show you some different binding techniques for fabric and then I'll show you how to dye that fabric in your indigo. Um, I have some examples of indigo dyed fabric here behind me. Now I think most people who are just getting started with indigo will start off with those kits that you can buy online which are great because everything's pre-measured. Um, you just mix it up and follow the directions to dye your fabric uh, but that makes four gallons of indigo and since it's just me today um, I have kind of the indigo chemicals in bulk and I've cut them down to make just a half a gallon. So I'm going to take you over to the sink and show you how to make your vat of indigo and then I'll bring you back over here to show you how to bind the fabric. All right so let's get started. So I'm over here at the sink and the first thing I'm going to do is put on my gloves. Um, anytime that you're working with a dye you definitely want to wear gloves. And then I'm going to add half a gallon of warm tap water to my container. Now if you are making indigo at home, you're probably going to want a round container with a tight lid because with a vat of indigo, like the goal is to reduce the amount of oxygen that enters into the dye. Um, and a lid will definitely help with that. So let me fill this with the warm water. All right, so our container is full. Let me move that out of the way. And I have a stick for stirring, a well-loved indigo stick here. And we're gonna start off with the sodium hydrosulfite. So this is a reducing agent that you need to use with indigo. It's also used as a, a non-aggressive um, alternative to bleach when you're trying to remove color from a dyed piece of fabric. So we're gonna gently pour that in. Oh, and I should mention right now, I am wearing my mask. Um, anytime that you're using uh, any dyes in powdered form, you wanna wear a mask so you don't breathe it in. Okay, next I'm gonna add soda ash. Um, you might have used soda ash if you've done tie dyeing in the past. Um, this helps change the uh, pH of the dye vat, which when you get a little more advanced, um, you worry more about what pH the dye is depending on what type of fabric you're gonna be using. And then I'm going to gently stir these together. Okay, next I'm going to add the pre-reduced indigo. So this is it here. And again, gently stir in one direction. Now your dye is gonna be this yellowy green color. And then it might have um, some foam or some shiny pieces at the top. That's completely fine. And you just wanna stir gently until most everything is dissolved, okay? And then this dye needs to sit for 15 to 30 minutes, um, ideally with a lid on it. Um, I don't have a lid for this container, so I have a giant scrabble letter that I'm gonna put on top of there. So we'll let that sit, and while it does, we'll go bind up our fabric. So I've got some squares of white cotton fabric. Um, whenever you're dyeing with indigo, you're gonna wanna use um, fabric made of natural fibers, so cotton, wool, silk. Um, let me show you one of my favorite binding techniques. This is a, a shape resist technique. And what you do is you'll take your piece of fabric and you'll fold it kind of accordion style. So forwards and backwards until you reach the end. And then you're gonna do accordion style in the opposite direction or in the other direction. So this way on my fabric. So forwards and backwards. And this is a small piece of fabric, so I end up with a, a small little square. And I'm gonna use rubber bands to hold it all together. Nice and tight. Okay, 
So that one's done. Um, I'll show you another technique. This one, it's pretty simple. Um, this one I'm going to fold in half. I'll fold in half again. And then I'm going to put rubber bands kind of along the edge here. Okay, I'm back at the sink, and now I'm going to um, wet these pieces of fabric that we're gonna dye. Make sure they're nice and saturated, but then you wanna squeeze out any excess water. And one thing you also wanna do while you're wetting them is to squeeze out any air. So if you folded your fabric or twisted your fabric and there's air inside, air pockets, try to squeeze those out remember we want to reduce the amount of oxygen that we introduce into our indigo vat. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is take a piece of yarn and attach our fabric to the yarn. Um, the reason we do this is because we don't want our fabric to sink to the bottom of the indigo vat because at the bottom, bottom is where you have um, kind of particles that maybe didn't dissolve all the way. And if they get on your fabric, um, it can leave it splotchy. So you kind of want to suspend your project in the middle of the vat. Now you can hold it down there. Um, I think it's just easier though to attach it to a string and hang it. Now it will take a few minutes for these pieces of fabric to get dyed. Um, it could take even longer though because the longer you have your fabric in there, the darker it's going to be. So if you want a darker piece of fabric, you'll have to leave it in there longer. If you want lighter, obviously you'll take it out sooner. Um, well, it looks like one of ours fell. That's okay. Alrighty, so this one is on there. Now let me take the lid off and let me get you guys a little closer so you can see what's going on. Um, so you see in here that it does look a little bit green and it has it almost looks like an oil slick on top. It's completely fine. Um, what you're going to do when you're ready to dye is just kind of move that top layer to the side if possible. With such a small container, it's not moving so well. But that's okay. Um, when we put our fabric into the dye, I'm gonna kind of put it in on the side away from these speckles here, because those will stick to your fabric as well. All right, so let's get started. Fabric, fabric's all ready to go. We're just gonna dip it in here, right on the sides there. And then again, you want it kind of suspended there in the middle, not touching the bottom. And this can take a few minutes to um, exactly really how long you want it, depending on how dark you want the fabric to be. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take these out. And this is the real fun of indigo, is removing your rubber bands and seeing what we made. Here's our first one. And you can see our accordion folding kind of left this grid pattern, which is kind of fun. So I'm gonna set this aside and we'll let it fully oxidize and turn blue. Let's look at our next one. Here's this one. Again, I'll let you see how they oxidize and turn blue. So you can see it's a really quick process. They've already turned blue. 
Um, at this point, what you'll need to do is wash your fabric with warm water and a gentle detergent. And that'll set everything and it'll be good to go. I really love how uh, our pieces turned out today, um, especially this one here with the, the eye in the middle. It's kind of fun. Um, indigo, it's a really fun dye to play with and to experiment with. Um, I know I said earlier that it only, it's recommended that you use only natural fibers, but I have experimented with some um, nylon type curtains and it absorbs some of the dye, but you had less control over where it went. But I still like the effect. So it's, especially if you um, make the full four gallons of indigo, you'll have a lot to experiment with. And if you do make the four gallons from a lot of the online kits you can buy, um, that, those four gallons will last probably three to five days. And it needs to be kept between 65 and 85 degrees. And it'll last longer if you keep a lid on it to reduce the amount of oxygen that gets into your dye. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration today, and I hope you kind of experiment with some indigo as well. All right, thank you. Bye.